Today, we begin the show with the latest Starship news breaking in Boca Chica, Texas. Then we'll go over some Dragon updates, talk about SpaceX movies, missions to come, and finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. All right, so let's pick things up where we left off in last Friday's episode. Around the time of my upload, SpaceX was removing and transporting the three hydraulic rams that they use for thrust simulation during cryo tests. They are moving them from SN8 down Highway 4 and back to the shipyard, or Starship Yard. Lewis from the Lab Padre YouTube channel was caught on his own candid camera, snapping a close-up of the battering rams from his vehicle. Just a couple days later on Sunday, Starship SN8's three Raptor engines, SN30, 32, and 39, were delivered to fill that vacant gap left under her skirt. And Elon, being the king of all eccentric rocketeers, was up early on Wednesday to take a peek at his presence under the tree. Although the diameter of the ship is 9 meters, or roughly 30 feet, it will be less roomy with three vacuum rocket engines added. Because future orbital starships will have six engines total, three of those being wrapped vac with much bigger nozzles. This is what the configuration should look like, fully loaded. This particular Starship model was gifted to me from fans of the channel, an uh, independent 3D printing studio located here in the US called Bohemzo. So if you'd like to own some cool SpaceX models, but like me, don't want to shell out hundreds of dollars for them, make sure you check out Bohemzo's Etsy store using the link in the description below. They aren't paying me for this, I just always wanted a Starship model, and it's nice to support local small businesses, especially when they're based out of California. How can you not feel sorry for them? You know, it just so happens that this particular week, full of Raptor news, just so happens to be the week that I was also planning on releasing my new line of Raptor merch. A couple months back, I put together three different designs. The one I'm wearing now is the not a flamethrower version. But no matter which you choose, I highly recommend the Tri-Blend material. It's super comfortable and super fancy. Find them using the Teespring link in the description as well. All right, but back to the topic at hand. Closures were scheduled for Wednesday night this week for SN8's first static fire and first static fire for any Starship using more than one Raptor engine. Notices to local residents were handed out, but nothing much ended up happening. And then last night, another attempt was made, and although they progressed as far as engine chillin', no pre-burner test or static fire occurred. The second backup date scheduled for tonight has since been canceled. Speculate with that information what you will, but nevertheless stand by for the new schedule. Elon did inform us that sometime after the static fire, SN8 will receive her nose cone. He didn't specify which of the two static fires, but I'm still kind of leaning toward after the first one, which would mean the final stacking of the nose cone to the main body is next on the to-do list. Since our last meeting, the nose was equipped with both forward flaps, fins, canards, you know, call them what you'd like. It's your happy little rocket. We don't, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. A very tough problem for SpaceX is sealing the moving flap to the body joint without melting or shredding the seal. And of course, once Starship goes higher and faster, those flaps will need to have heat shield tiles mechanically attached to the windward sides, just like the main body of the rocket. Elon is still considering transpiration cooling in some areas of the heat shield, basically allowing Starship to perspire or sweat like your body does to cool off. Warm. This was one of the original plans back in the early days, but international traffic and arms laws, laws that prevent SpaceX from hiring non-US employees, also prevents SpaceX from being too specific about solutions. Rockets are weapons technology after all. As far as other starships in production right meow are concerned, SN10 has been moved into the mid bay next to SN9 and is about to undergo its stacking regimen. And now other parts like a downcomer have been spotted around the shipyard labeled as SN14, which means SpaceX is working on at least seven different starships at once here. That's pretty incredible. And they said it couldn't be done. Both NASA and the military are starting to really recognize the potential Starship has to offer the future of space travel. The United States Military Command, that is in charge of overseas logistics operations, has signed a cooperative R&D agreement called CRADA with SpaceX and Exploration Architecture Corporation to study rapid space transportation, which includes Starship point-to-point -point capabilities around the globe. This is not the first time the U.S. military has spoken to SpaceX concerning Starship. Every year for the past three years or so, Elon and SpaceX COO Gwen Shotwell have met with the top brass to discuss the potential for their Mars rocket. Elon did clap back at journalists that tried to label their endeavor as war hawking or gun chauffeuring for the military industrial complex. Good grief, Charlie Brown. SpaceX is getting zero money for this. This agreement is on a volunteer basis. Starship is designed to carry people and cargo around Earth, also to the moon and Mars. Vast majority of use will be civilian, 
It's just like an airline in space. All airlines sometimes carry military cargo, but 99% is civilian. But that's not to say SpaceX isn't getting any funding from the US taxpayer for Starship. NASA just awarded SpaceX 53 million more dollars to continue on with their propellant transfer research that SpaceX will use to refuel Starship in orbit. With this new fundage, they are expected to execute a full-scale demonstration, which includes transferring 10 metric tons of cryogenic propellant, liquid oxygen, between tanks on a Starship vehicle. This 53 million was part of the 370 million NASA handed out to 14 different companies during their fifth round of tipping point contracts, part of NASA's overall plan to put people on the moon by 2024 and eventually on to Mars. And speaking of Mars, Elon will be speaking once again at this year's Mars Society Convention, where it is expected he'll be discussing Starship and SpaceX's efforts to colonize the Red Planet in great detail. Although it will be a virtual appearance, his slot begins at 6 p.m. Eastern time tonight, 3 p.m. Pacific. If you're interested, I provided a link below. Members can watch it live with me. And finally, YouTuber Mr. Beast, you may have heard of him, stepped into our little corner of the internet this week when he left an Easter egg at the end of his latest video. I wonder what that means. A man was spotted wearing a SpaceX cap while holding a moon sign. When pressed what this mystery means, he replied it's the biggest thing he'll ever do in his career. Can't say anything else, smiley face. Many are speculating that it may have something to do with Dear Moon, Starship's first expected crewed trip around the moon in 2023. Mr. Beast, sir, I am so happy for you. Hello, is this a jelly school? The Crew-1 mission to take astronauts up to the nest has been pushed from Halloween to no earlier than November 11th. The slip is due to the unexpected pressure rise in the turbo machinery gas generator that occurred just prior to liftoff of the GPS-3 vehicle on October 2nd. And we have an abort. All agencies stand by. Boosters for both missions are new, so this allotted time allows SpaceX to resolve the issue. This does mean the liftoff dates for both the Crew-1 capsule and the CRS-21 cargo capsule, slated with a launch date no earlier than November 22nd, are now closing in on each other. A flock of dragons, if you will. Dragon 21, the first upgraded cargo capsule, left SpaceX HQ in Hawthorne, California last week for Florida. This new version of Dragon is modeled after its crewed counterpart and is capable of transporting 50% more payloads than the previous model. In other news, HBO is putting together a new six-episode series titled SpaceX, based off the book Elon Musk, Tesla, SpaceX, and the Quest for a Fantastic Future by Ashley Vance. It will feature the company and what led to the Demo 2 launch of Bob and Doug back in May. Variety broke the story, writing that Channing Tatum is an executive producer, but Elon isn't currently part of the project. Which would be ironic given the fact that the guy has made so many cameos in films over the years, yet may not be in his own biopic. God, he has to play the part of the Russian that spit on him in 2001. You insult me, comrade. Get that to my country. All right, let's look at what missions are coming our way. Well, first up, we're releasing the 14th flock of Starlink sats a couple days from now on Sunday morning. You can join me live right here for that. And also next week is Starlink's 15 launch overall. It's supposed to lift off on Wednesday afternoon, but still no date for the GPS-3 Mulligan because of the technical issues we spoke about earlier. And then sometime later in October, we should have the Enroll 108. This is the secret mission we revealed a couple episodes ago. Turns out it is a spy satellite for the US government, but it doesn't appear to be a replacement for the previously and supposedly lost Zuma mission. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. For the first time in 10 months, Blue Origin launched a new Shepard rocket to the edge of space after a previous scrub in late September that resulted from a power glitch. On Tuesday morning, an S-13 lifted off from the West Texas desert, the BE-3 engine producing that roar we've all come to know and love. On board was a series of experiments and postcards, but the creme de la creme was the NASA sensors strapped to the booster. Um, some sensors that give us some great understanding of how we do precision landing on the moon. After separating from the capsule, the rocket fell back to Earth and made silky smooth contact with the surface. There we go. Wow. Look at that stability. So stable. Touch. Oh my God. Down. Ah, yes, and don't forget the shoots, brah. It was a record setting launch for the company, and for any suborbital class booster, in fact, being that it was the seventh time it had flown. 
SpaceX has launched a single orbital class booster six times, but is aiming for more than 10 consecutive flights by the end of next year. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the show. You know, every week someone always comments, Hey, Kevin, why don't you do more videos and why don't you make them longer? Well, the thing is, I do. Become a member by joining our Patreon or YouTube membership program below for as little as a few bucks a month and receive access to my more in-depth midweek SpaceX news videos in return. Also, your membership allows me to keep pushing out content like this to inspire future generations. And please don't forget to support our local SpaceX contributors. Do have a nominal weekend. Hope to see you Sunday. And until that time, Godspeed.